Hey there, Nikki Tracos of Life by Design. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So for this tutorial, I thought I would create a fun freebie for you to work on now that the holidays are near and we are getting ready hopefully to paint some greeting cards or some wall art. Maybe you're making gifts for friends and family. This sweet nutcracker and a lettered piece on earth motif is something that I've created just with those few things in mind. So here I'm just working out my color palette. I have a few colors that I'm working on and mixing and blending together. They are green gold, Payne's gray, alizarin crimson, as well as some cobalt turquoise light. So a few of you have asked about this uh, kneadable eraser that I'm using. So that's exactly what it is. It's a kneadable eraser. It doesn't have any of those bits when you remove your pencil lines and it doesn't disturb the surface of your watercolor paper. So I really love using a kneadable eraser versus an eraser that has um, rubber bits that leave a bit of a stain sometimes and just a mess on your paper. So here I've decided to start with um, the bold red color that I am painting in my Nutcracker. I'm using a very light wash of um, paint. I should actually mention that I'm using an Arches watercolor paper. Um, it is 100% cotton, really beautiful to work on if you haven't worked on it or used it before. Um, you do have to make sure you use a lot of water in your watercolor mixture just to make sure that you um, have some time to blend and move your pigments around. So again here just working on filling in um, some of the really bold red that we are adding to this beautiful little nutcracker and um, thinking about what colors I want to apply where. Um, I did have a visual inspiration for this guy and um, I, I did like some of the colors that they used but I wanted to create my own color family and that's something that I always encourage my students to do in watercolors made simple is when you paint with colors that you love that speak to you you will enjoy your piece so much more when it's complete when you use colors that um, are within your own personal taste you are automatically drawn to what you're painting so again pick up colors that speak to you I decided to go with a bit of variety here with traditional red and I changed the green to more of a gold green rather than a um, forest or a what I would consider a holiday or Christmas green and then again just use what uh, speaks to you so here I did get a little bit too much water um, on my piece but I was able to pick it up no problem just quickly with a clean bit of paper towel. So that's a little tip. If you make a mistake, no worries. If you catch it quickly enough, you're able to just absorb that top layer before it gets soaked into your uh, paper. So here just pulling away a little bit for some highlights, going back over my brush stroke while it's still wet. And with a dry clean brush, I can pull away a little bit of that paint on the surface of the paper to create a really sweet and easy highlight. And then just going back with the same alizarin crimson, adding in more depth and uh, definition to the base of my nutcracker. So here I grabbed a little bit of Payne's Gray just at the very tip of my brush so that I can create a bit of shadowing on the red. This is um, a trick that I like to do when I want to create a bit of shadow but not use the actual color itself um, to, to create that extra value. And here I again like to use Payne's Gray in lieu of something that would be white just to have um, a bit of a gray shadow tone. And I like the blue undertone in Payne's Gray because it gives it a little bit of warmth um, rather than being a flat, flat gray. So here I'm just adding again a little bit of that red. Now my brush was um, very wet and I did see that it was starting to blend into the hair so I wasn't patient enough. That's why I like to work around my piece to make sure that I give areas time to dry before I paint right next to them. So that was my error, but I just went for it. When I'm painting, especially pieces like this, I don't mind if there's little blips or little mistakes that happen along the way. I'm actually totally okay with that. Really just enjoy those inconsistencies and what really gives our pieces personality. So here I'm just starting to bring in that green gold, taking a look at areas that I can accentuate 
and areas that I want to add just a little bit of warmth to and start to bring in a little bit more interest. I do have some yellow ochre I should mention and some lemon yellow. I'll be using that to mix a little bit of a gold tone so that again will bring in a little bit more warmth um, as I am putting in some of this warm gold green. If you haven't painted with gold green, it really is a lovely color. Um, all of the paints that I'm using today are from Winsor Newton. It's by their professional line. I love using their paints and pieces that I'm going to um, sell or gift because they are a light fast or light light fast, uh, which means that they basically will last a very long time. With watercolor paintings, you have to worry about um, fading and especially if you're not using acid-free paper or even mounting your piece on acid-free mounts, um, you have to worry about them fading and not lasting um, a long time. I, I don't want to say forever, but you want to make sure that your piece does withstand um, the sun and elements and make sure that it starts to fade and last quite nicely. So here, just bringing in a little bit of that cobalt turquoise light. It's a color that I use, whether it's in landscapes, um, my botanicals. I feel like it just gives a really interesting pop of color. I even add it to green sometimes, and um, the way they blend together is really beautiful. So I'm using a, a very small number three brush um, at this point, just to make sure that I get some nice details. I'm not too uh, fussy when it comes to painting in details in pieces like this. Uh, what I do like to focus on more is just the um, impression of, of very clean lines. And again, I don't stress too much about my lines being perfect or my shapes being perfect. With watercolor, I feel like the more texture um, and the more interest you can create with the texture of watercolor, the better. It just, again, feels very hand-painted and beautiful. So here, just adding a little bit of that yellow ochre and a lemon yellow that I've mixed together just for a bit of a brighter version of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre can tend to be um, a little bit on the darker, I want to say warmer side, but when I add a little bit of that lemon yellow, I can create a nice bright yellow. And again, just creating um, the idea of those areas, especially in the stuff that he's holding, that they are a nice gold tone to them. Coming into his boots, again, just bringing in that yellow ochre and um, lemon yellow color that I like to mix together. So really, when you're painting this guy, play around with it. Maybe paint him a few different ways and um, work on different colors. Maybe you can add one that's more of a cool tone with a lot of blues and um, lighter, maybe lighter versions of blue, and then paint one that's more traditional with these holiday Christmassy colors with the yellow and gold and see what you like. I imagine um, that there will be lots of beautiful greeting cards made from this little nutcracker and I would love to see how you're interpreting it and um, the colors that you are using. Go ahead and tag me if you do um, share them. I would love to see how he turns out and how you are handling him. So here just going in with my fine detail brush to make sure that I can get in some really nice solid lines to create some value, depth, and interest. It is a three over zero that I'm using, um, and it's one that I also use for lettering, which you'll see in a little bit, but just going in and making sure to add in some of the detail in his jacket, as well as um, bringing in some depth into the jewels that are in his crown. And of course, this video is sped up slightly just so um, you can get a quicker version of how I would paint him, but take your time, go slow. And as you can see, I'm working around the piece in different areas, looking at um, what needs to be just given a more attention to or what needs to be defined a little bit more. And so the piece is in various degrees of wet in terms of the brush strokes. So as you go back over an area that's already been painted and maybe drying for a little bit, you'll notice that you'll be able to create a little bit more opacity and depth with your brush strokes. Okay, so here just using a little bit of burnt umber. His hands are made of wood and he in fact is carved out of wood is what I'm imagining. So I'm just going in with what would be a warm 
um, sort of wood tone and that is a watered down version of my burnt umber. So I'm not doing a lot of color mixing with him. I'm actually just working straight from tubes, working with colors that are, um, I think, very traditional and ones that you should have in your watercolor painting kit. You'll be surprised at the colors you can mix with the ones that I'm using here in this tutorial. So again, just working on defining his face, I want to give him a bit of a rosy cheek. So while the brush strokes are still wet, I'm adding just a little bit of red to his cheeks and that's really going to blend in nicely um, with the wood tone in his face. So here using my paints gray, one of my most favorite colors to use in a lot of my paintings. And what I'm doing is he's uh, wearing white pants in the image and I really like that. His boots are black, but again, I like the warmth of uh, Payne's Gray versus using a black. So often, if a image requires more of a deep, dark color, which would be um, a black, I tend not to use a true black. I like to use this Payne's Gray, and then I'll just build the value um, basically very slowly, just building layers and layers of Payne's Gray so that I can create some nice definition and still have some highlights come through. So here I'm making sure to not go over the um, yellow buttons on his boots, working around again very slowly. Using my number three brush, you can go ahead and use your three over zero or your detail brush, um, but I tend to have a light hand when I'm painting, so I'm actually quite confident using a brush that's a little bit bigger. But I also love that it holds a little bit more paint and water. So um, the brush hairs are just a little bit more dense so I can actually load it up a little bit less frequently than if um, I was painting with my 3 over 0 brush. Okay, So as his boots are starting to dry very slowly I can go back over them and build a little bit of that value starting to still keep the highlights and then working again around different areas. I know that I'm using Payne's Gray so I'll go through different parts of the painting to add a little bit of Payne's Gray in detail to the piece. And you can see he's starting to come together. I did um, mess up his eyes a little bit. It's a little bit challenging when you're recording, when you really want to get over the piece but don't want to get your head in the camera. So I did clean his eyes up a little bit and did tidy him up a little bit um, after I finished recording this tutorial. But again, take your time. This piece probably took me a good, I'd say, 35, 45 minutes to paint, um, but take your time with it. You don't have to finish it in one sitting. Um, make sure that you give yourself lots of time to go back and add in, again, just some of that nice depth and detail because it makes it all the difference in a finished piece when you can go over it again and again, just adding very slight tweaks so that you can create a more dynamic finished painting. So here again, just using a very, very watered down version of Payne's Gray for his beard, adding a bit of fullness to his hair, and then again, adding more definition with that yellow and a yellow ochre mix. So again, very, very watered down version of the Payne's Gray. I'm going in to add a little bit of depth and dimension to his pant legs, making sure that I go back and add some shadowing as well. So here with my number three over zero, it is a detail brush. I am just going over the lettering very slowly, making sure that I take my time adding a tiny bit more pressure on the downstroke and adding um, a little bit of finesse to our piece on earth lettering. So this is the green gold. Again, I really like it. I think it's warm. Uh, Payne's Gray is probably my my go-to, but I thought it would be nice to use the green gold and I actually quite like that. So here again, I'll just go over slightly and continue to add a little bit more of depth and dimension to the piece. And it'll almost um, seem to pop off the page when you do that. So if you don't know how much detail to add or if you're not quite sure when to stop, I always say take a photograph, take a take a picture with your phone of your piece and really look at how much depth there is because when you flatten the image with using a photograph you'll be able to see if um, your piece is dynamic if it needs a little bit more 
attention, like what I'm doing here by adding in some of that depth. Again, with recording, I can't um, hold up the piece necessarily to um, hold it away from me to look at it, but that's another thing you can do is just hold it away from you, let your eyes sort of relax and see if there's any areas maybe that are inconsistent or that need um, to be defined a little bit more. And then take your time with the finishing pieces and you're adding a little bit more detail and definition to them. So here, just adding a bit of shadowing to his pants. Again, I want him to kind of look like he's jumping off the page, like maybe he's real and is going to come to life and um, just, again, giving him a bit of personality and interest. So just looking around where you can add some shadowing, adding a little bit more rosiness to his cheeks and really making him look dynamic and just have fun with it. Again, I wanted to create a freebie that could help you paint and make um, a greeting card from. There you go. All you have to do is fold and score your paper and you have a beautiful greeting card with our little nutcracker.